Hello, this is a short demo video going over a demo scenario using the Azure IoT Dev Kit, also known as the MX chip, on a simulated environment on the internet um, to demonstrate connecting an IoT device to Azure IoT Hub, which is then connected to the ThingWorks platform via the Azure IoT uh, Hub connector. And we're going to have a look at how this is set up a little bit, specifics around the Azure IoT Hub connector some details of how it's configured and how we can do diagnostics using local logs and ThingWorks server monitoring. And then we're going to look at automatically importing devices that exist on the Azure IoT Hub into ThingWorks uh, and having their values um, bound automatically and, and essentially communicating up so that we can start doing application development in ThingWorks. Let's have a quick look and using the Azure IoT Dev Kit with ThingWorks and Azure IoT Hub. So if I just do a search for the Dev Kit Simulator, this is a web-based simulator for the MX Chip IoT Dev Kit board here. And you can see that it comes up from GitHub um, loading a default application that we can use. I'm going to change the application from the Shake Shake application to the Get Started application, which is the classic Arduino uh, application that comes with the board. We're going to use this, and all it's going to do is send a couple of temperature and humidity values up. Obviously, they're simulated here, up to IoT Hub. So let me flip over to my Azure IoT Hub here, and I have this IoT Hub that is configured already. So I am just going to come down in here to IoT devices and I'm going to create a new IoT device. I'm going to call it Dev Kit Sim and I'm going to auto-generate everything that's on here. So it's created a new device. And I can see that it now shows up in the list here. So really all I need to do to use this simulator is I come into the IoT device here and I'm gonna see the device ID, the primary key, secondary key, they're hidden for security purposes. But what I want is the um, connection string and the connection string includes the primary key as well as details on how to connect to it. And I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to paste in this primary connection string into the connection string here and I'm gonna save this. And that's just going to save that in a cookie. And so what I should be able to do now is click on Run. Uh, and it will connect to the Azure IoT Hub that is configured in this connection string here. And I should see some messages start to come up that we're sending messages to IoT Hub. And you can see that that is happening. It's going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see some of the values here. Uh, so we do see some temperature values that are changing. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to um, VS Code. VS Code is a nice little development tool that happens to have some built-in functionality for monitoring an Azure IoT Hub. And here I've got the Azure IoT Hub tools, plugins installed for VS Code. And this is going to give me the ability to monitor it here. So you can see I have a list of IoT devices over here on the side. If I click Refresh, I should see um, my new dev kit device show up here with green, indicating that it is there and online. And what I want to do is I'm going to right click on, actually I'll monitor the entire hub. I'll right click on dev kit sim. They start monitoring built in endpoint. And here from VS code, I'll start to see data coming in from this um, simulated MX chip. Now you can buy uh, an MX chip. They're not very expensive, maybe about $35. A nice little device that has a few sensors, not very expensive, very small, has an LCD screen on it, can be programmed in Arduino. Uh, but for our purposes, it's obviously easier to just get access to the one on the internet here uh, for the purpose of this demo. So I can see that I got some values coming in here to IoT Hub. Now I want to obviously make sure that this is coming into to the, the next step of my demo. The next step is to get this data from IoT Hub 
into the Azure IoT hub connector for ThingWorks so that we can essentially get that piped into ThingWorks VM where I have the ThingWorks Azure IoT hub connector installed. And I'm in the opt IoT hub connector slash conf folder where I have the configurations for um, the connection server here. And let's just have a look at the main configuration file, which is I've called IoT hub connector.conf. And here you can see a number of things. First of all is the thing name of the connection server as it will show up um, in ThingWorks. And this is what we're going to see in the monitoring for connection servers. The protocol to use uh, here I've got SSL configured. So there is a, a key store that's used to, to store securely the certificate. Um, I have not encrypted anything in this particular configuration file. That's obviously recommended best practice, but just from a dub, uh, troubleshooting and diagnostics pr purpose, I wanted to get this working first. Um, and then as I come down, I see that the transport.websockets section here, this is where the always on configuration to ThingWorks is established. So I have the app key that is going to be associated with my Azure IoT hub user in ThingWorks. Um, and then finally, the platforms equals secure WebSocket connection to the uh, WebSocket URL of ThingWorks. So that's really all that you need in this configuration file for it to work. Um, one other thing I will mention is the environment variables. Environment variables are going to be needed in order to point to the Java runtime, as well as specify some options for running the connection server, as well as feeding in the Azure IoT protocol adapter options here, which you can see here. Uh, and this is pointing to the configure, configuration file to use, as well as the logback configuration. And the secret management here is for the secure key store, which is a new addition in the latest release of the Azure IoT Hub Connector to ensure that everything is encrypted. And finally, uh, let's just have a quick look at the service configuration. This is the service configuration that is going to read that environment file in order to read those um, environment variables before launching the um, system the service here. So let's go ahead and launch that. Okay, so now we've launched the system service. And we see that it is active and running here. Um, looks like it's all set up. So one of the things that I wanted to point out is I've just added, I've taken the um, the top of this logback-long-sample file here, which specifies this particular property name log home value here which I've set to var log IoT hub connector. This way, all of the log files for this are going to go into that folder. And I'm using that in both of my config files. Otherwise, the log files don't show up in a, in a consistent um, place because I'm running it as a service. And so now let's just have a, have a look here. I have two, two files in var log IoT hub connector. This is the long version, so it's got this ops version of the, the file, which is more of an IT operational perspective file. And then I have this other one down here, which is just the classic debug logging for, um, for the connection server. So I've really been going through this step by step. So I've created my device in IoT Hub, and it looks like the operation version of the file says everything is going OK. Here, however, I am getting some errors. This is an error that's just essentially telling me that this device is not provisioned in ThingWorks. Uh, however, it does seem that I have the Azure IoT Hub connector set up and running properly, and uh, data is flowing everywhere. So as the next step, let's come over to ThingWorks. Now in ThingWorks, what I'm going to do, 
once I get signed in is I'm going to come over to the Connection Services Hub. I've obviously followed the Getting Started Guide on getting the Azure IoT Hub connector um, set up and configured with ThingWorks. And coming into the Connection Services Hub, there's a service in here. It should be called Import Import uh, Azure IoT Devices. And what this is going to do, it's going to import the devices that are configured on my IoT Hub that I already have set up. And I know that mine is called DevKit, I believe. DevKit Sim, so I'm just going to say Dev Star and um, you know what, I'm going to leave that as a star and I'm going to use a different MX chip, actually I will put Dev Star, MX chip thing template where I've actually already configured the temperature and the humidity values which will be read from the simulator. So we'll use this thing template to create all the new devices that match this particular pattern that's been completed. So let's just come in and have a look here to ensure that those devices have been created. And I do see here my dev kit sim, which has been created. Um, I will just kind of note here briefly the Azure IoT Hub thing. This Azure IoT Hub thing is, is what is inheriting from that connection services that we just saw there previously. And here we can see it is connected. So I do know my Azure IoT Hub is working. And also if I come over into um, connection servers over here in the monitoring section, I do see this name that I had in my configuration file uh, for the IoT Hub connection server is showing up here and is showing me the various um, metrics and details of my connection server. So if I come back here to my dev kit sim, one thing that I do need to do as it wasn't done automatically is I need to set the value for the gateway thing. And this is just creating the binding to say that this particular Azure IoT um, thing is coming from this Azure IoT hub that I have previously connected. And once I save this, then it should give me a message to say, okay, yep, the dev kit sim device is active and online. And we see that this changes now to say it's connected. And I should also start to see uh, a time that it was last connected here, as well as some values that are coming in. So we have a humidity of 68.42 and a temperature of 26.53. If I come back over here to my monitor in VS Code, I see effectively 25.50 coming in from the device. I have gotten ahead of myself here. Right, it sent other values in the meantime. Anyway, so that's just a quick look at um, the end-to-end -end demo of the MX chip IoT uh, device demo and connecting that to IoT Hub and getting that connected up and configured with the ThingWorks Azure IoT Hub connector and getting that working with ThingWorks.